All right, uh, Decisive Battles of World War II, Course and Pocket SSG Matrix Games Tutorials, picking up with Lesson 7. In this lesson, we'll look at uh, clearing minefields again, combats involving two dice, capturing objectives, how alert points work, uh, and viewing the victory screen. Um, so, clearing minefields revisited. Examine the battlefield pop-up for hexes 2413, 24... 13, I don't know where that is. 20, 20, 24, okay, 24, 13, and 24, 14. There we go. Okay, the 1st Engineer Battalion possessing, that's that one right there. 1st Engineer, 1st Engineer Battalion has, where is it? Is it that? Mine clearing. Well, it has mine clearing capability. Um, er, I'm sorry, repair bridge capability. Um, de decremented the minefield. Oh, it's gone. Uh, decremented the minefield in hex 2414. Yeah, 2414 um, uh, by three, clearing it completely. None of the now we're looking at 2413. Um, okay, there. Minefield is still there. Yeah. Hmm. You, you got to look for that symbol there, I guess. Um, uh, none of the infantry units in hex uh, 2413, uh, so hex, oops, hex, oops, oops, huh. All right. Um, none of these units have. Um, I'm looking right here at these capabilities. So, first tank destroyer, <coughs> 14th infantry, 15th infantry, and 16th infantry. Um, none of the infantry units in hex 2413 possess repair bridge capability. So, the minefield in that hex decremented by two. Okay, finally at the start of their last turn, had a blue force unit, not strong point, been adjacent to these minefields, the decrement would have been limited to a maximum of one. All right, combats involving two dice. Combats involving two dice are not really much different to other combats, but we'll run through the example here so that you'll be familiar with their features. Use the battlefield pop-up to examine the three blue force units in hex 24-5. 24 5. 24 20 uh, 22.5, yeah, 22.5, okay, um, um, the total number of enemy steps present is 10, L let's look for that, that's four steps, one, two, three, four, well, you can also see there, four plus uh, three is seven, another three is, is 10, okay, uh, total number of enemy steps present is uh, in 10 is 10. Four for the Panzer unit and three each for the Grenadier units. The train is clear. Uh, yes, it is. The train is clear. Uh, go to the gr uh, control panel to bring up the terrain um, CRT screen. Clear terrain being at the top of the list there. Um, is already selected on the right of the screen just above the combat results table um, is the two dice graphic. Oh, there, two dice graphic. Uh, it tells you that if there are nine or more enemy steps in a clear terrain hex then there will be a 100 percent chance that two dice will be rolled for the combat. Check mountains terrain. Right there. Seven or more. Oh, there it is. Seven steps, seven or more steps are enough here to produce a 100% chance of two dice for combat. Okay. Uh, the lead up to an automatic two dice is gradual. Where the defending hex has one fewer steps than the trigger value listed in the terrain CRT screen, the chance for two dice is 75%, two fewer means 50%, and three fewer means 20%. That must be what the that uh, slope there refers to. Is that it? One. Um, two, three, four, five, yeah, must be. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, hmm. um, where are the chances, other than 0 or 100%, you won't know whether you get the two dice until after you hit the fire button? Okay, so let's put in an attack. Move the uh, 10th Infantry Regiment from hex 21 3. 21 3. 21-3, there it is. Move 10th Infantry Regiment, 10th Infantry Regiment, right right there. From Hex 21-3 uh, to Hex 22-4. So, select, and 22-4, 22-4. Okay. Move the 1st Armored Cavalry Battalion from, oh, Control, boom. Uh, First Armored Cavalry from Hex 21-4 to Hex 22-4. Same Hex. Okay. Move the CCB and CCR regiments from Hex 25. Um, yeah, let me press L to unselect everybody on the map. Uh, 25. Hex 20 there, five, there it is. Okay, so select it, press the space bar to pick up both CCB here and CCR here. All right, um, from hex 25 uh, to hex 21, five. 21, five, there. Uh, move CCB, move CCA regiment from hex 26, that's probably Okay, CCA is selected right there. Move CCA regiment from hex 26 to hex 215. Um, move the second infantry regiment from hex 27. 27. There. Um, the Second infantry there. All right, so. All right, second is selected. Second infantry uh, from 27 to hex, hex 21 6. It's probably that one right there, 21 6. Like that. Move the uh, second tank destroyer battalion. Second tank. No, that should be armor. Second tank destroyer. Oh, that's probably this one. Second Tank Destroyer Battalion from Hex 24 uh, yep, to Hex 21-6. 21-6. Okay. Move the Second Armor Battalion from Hex 26. There we go. Select. Uh, second Armor. Two twenty-two four, twenty-two four. Okay. Um, oh, one more. Move the first rocket battalion from hex twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Yeah. Okay. First rocket battalion from hex 29 to 26. Uh oh. There we go. Oops. Ah, uh, 26, yeah. Okay. Uh, launch an attack against the units in hex 225. 225, okay. And hit the max button. So I'm, I'm remembering from before. I think I choose any unit, right? Launch an attack. Okay. Um, I'll just select them all. Launch an attack. Okay. Max. Right here. Maximize combat result. Max button in the combat activity area right here. It's combat activity area. The odds are, okay, so I'm going to select max. The odds are 10 to 1 plus right there. And the chance of two dice is 100% right there. 100% two dice. 
right click right click on the overrun icon overrun icon uh oh over oh well now here was I suppose it says launch an attack am I supposed to press am I supposed to see that messed me up last time uh I'm trying to figure out if I'm supposed to no see <laughs> There's like four par paragraphs there, short paragraphs. Four short paragraphs, and then it says hit fire button. So, all right, I'm not hitting the fire button yet. So right-click on the overrun icon on the, okay, it tells me I should have read more, right? Uh, at the extreme left of the combat display. Right here, so, I think, yeah, that's the overrun. The overrun icon on the stream left of the combat uh, display area, and you can view a breakdown um, of your attack components. We'll go through them, okay? So, combat strength. Combat strengths. Yeah, okay, nice. Attack 118 to defense 49, rounding down to 2 to 1. Oh, nice. 2 to 1. Um, well, this is nice. The net tactical shift is 1 um, in favor of the attacker, bringing the odds to 3 to 1. Um, both sides have an elite unit, so unit quality, attack 1, defense 1. Net, no change, 3 to 1. Nice. Um, the attacker has committed... Um, the attacker has committed a general, used. Um, uh, so that adds one column, so it's 4 to 1. Uh, we don't have an overrun because we need 5 to 1, in excluding all artillery, barrage, and bombardment. Oh, that's nice. Overrun. Possible but n possible but needs 5 to 1. We're at 4 to 1. Wow, that's nice. All right, so a nice breakdown of everything. Um, uh, for that, we did the only way to... Okay, for that, and the only way we can increase our odds is to add 29 more attack value points. Unfortunately, while we have that many on the battlefield, they don't have the OPs to get into position. Finally, there's a net artillery shift of 6. Net artillery shift of 6. That must be here. Our air bomb, uh, bar, bar bombardment, maybe artillery attack eight, defense two, not used for overrun. Oh, that's nice. It even clarifies everything. Okay, so uh, finally, there's an artillery shift of six in the attacker's favor, bringing the odds to ten to one or better. Check the combat display area to see how that's made up. That's what we just did. Hit the fire button. Okay. Uh, conduct combat. Okay. Boom. All right, um, I rolled a four and six. We got a five and one. Um, that's one casualty, step loss for the attacker, and four step losses and a retreat for the defender. So let's look at, at those results. Those re results would be four. Um, uh, that's one casualty for the attacker. D2R. And then um, do, 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 four, six. Nothing for the attacker to use. Okay, so they added it together. So in their case, they got a four and a six. So we add them together. Attacker one step loss. Defender four step losses and retreat. Uh, and a retreat, yeah. Okay, so we got five and a one, which are highlighted. It's nice. So A1, D2 are. Okay. Interesting. All right. I guess I ex exit... All right, capturing objectives. All objectives on the ma map are named. For the moment, ignore the... Am I supposed to get completely out of this? I, well, I'm going to. I just did. Uh, for the moment, ignore the nationality flags to the left of the objective names. Oh, that must be these ones. The flags there, there, there. Oh, okay, there. Oh, that's nice. Overprinted on the map. That, that is nice. Oh, let's see if, um, what is the, I forgot the name, um, town names. Let's see if they go with the town names. Oh, they do. Okay, they go with the ta town names. For the moment, ignore the nationality flag is to the left of the objective names. They identify which side earns alert points when an objective is captured. AP are dealt with it in, in the next section. Alert points, uh, when an objective is captured, APs... 
or uh, never mind. In the previous turn, Red Force captured two objectives. Litchfield, right there. Litchfield, there. And uh, King's Coat, here. Uh, right click on the town of King's Coat. Okay. Like that. Hex 2413. This is right here. Move the cursor over the Red Force nationality flag. Here? No. Here? I guess. Here. Um, um, Red Force National Graffiti in the bottom row. Oh, in the bottom row, okay. Got to keep reading. Um, here's what it tells you. Okay, for end, for each of turns 1 through 10, turns 1 through, f one through 10, um, uh, Red Force will receive 4 victory points. Um, each turn they control the objective. Red Force has owned the objective for one turn. Up oh, there it is. Right there. So far, Red Force has earned a bonus of 20 VP for capturing the objective. There, capture. Um, um, the objective, two APs have been awarded to Red Force. Oh, yeah, AP alert points. All right. Um, right click on the city of Litchfield. Um, hex 27. 27 right there. The rewards are similar. There we go. Um, except no APs are awarded. Yep. There's no APs over there. Um, right click on the city of Hol Holwell here. Um, hex 346. 346. Um, uh, you haven't captured it yet. The VP. Uh, uh, rewards are high. Yep. Capture 40. That's high. Making it an important objective, but beware the APs earned when it's captured go to your opponent. Ah, oh, that's interesting. So that must be there. That flag, alert points. Huh. Objectives are considered captured from the turn they are occupied, but VP awards are not made until the following turn. This means you have one turn to recapture an objective without conceding its VP value. I guess that could be significant in a game that lasts 10 turns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, all right, how alert points work. So what, what are APs or alert points? APs are the mechanisms we have chosen to address the difficulties of dealing with finite map boundaries, to reward progress in the right direction, and to reflect the responses of higher military commands to unexpected successes and or disasters. Many objectives, when captured, award APs to one of the belligerents. An AP award is made only once. Okay. Um, the first time an objective is captured. There are two types of APs. The first earns credit towards new units, and the second earns credit towards additional replacements, both infantry and armor. In the example of King's Code above, Oh, that's what that means. Um, um, the for Red Force receives two AP credits towards replacements and none for new units. That must be that divide there. Um, there's only one objective on the map which awards AP towards new units for Red Force. Right click on the city of Eagle Point. Um, 12.10, okay. If Blue Force captures Eagle Point, two APs are received towards new units for Red Force. So that must be that right there. All right. Um, so how are APs expended? Right click on the upper section uh, of the replacement area. Replacement area, that's here, right? Um, no. Here, that's the motor pool. There we go. All right, so click right click, right click on the upper uh, section of the replacement area to bring up the replacement pop up. On the right side, of the pop up is a breakdown of your alert status. Alert status, Red Force alert status. Um, you have two credits, I guess gain two, um, each towards armor and infantry. So two and two. 
um, uh, inventory replacements and no credits for new units. Oh, that's new units. Yeah, little unit symbol. None yet. Um, um, indeed, you will need to suffer a major disaster if the enemy is ever to capture Eagle Point. The required column, required, 532, um, tells you that 5 APs are needed to earn an additional armor replacement, 3 APs for an additional infantry replacement. Finally, for your records, the earned column here um, keeps track of the total AP replacements and new units awarded throughout the game. So, next section, viewing the victory screen. The victory screen is accessed from the control panel, middle row center, right there. Click on it. There we go. Um, top panel tells you up here, tells you the current VP position. Where is that? Where is it? Um, the top panel tells you the current VP position as well as oh that's not very that doesn't jump out at you but <laughs> access player currently winning by 99 points okay as well as a prediction of the final results so if no further casualties or change in territory the access player will win by 183 points okay assuming no further casualties or changes in control of objectives the center section of the screen so here I guess reminds you of the game parameters you have chosen oh, okay like red force allied human exposed units normal supply normal replacements normal combats unknown units off okay uh, the four panels at the bottom one two three four um, tell you the margins required for each level of victory okay so draw marginal decisive overwhelming um, okay